Y'all don't hear that? It's Bad Dog Podcast. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> You are now listening to Bad Dog Podcast. You guys know who it is. It's Troy. Here at Bad Dog Podcast, we got a good episode for y'all today. Um, If you haven't subscribed and liked our channel, you need to go ahead and go do that, like, right now. It's okay. It's okay. You can put this on pause, and then you can go do that, and then come back, and we'll be right here. Okay. So, today, we talking about animal love, man. That's right. Animal love. And, um... Yeah, so I'm gonna just tell y'all, man, how I how I got into liking animals and all that stuff, right? So anyway, my grandma, she used to subscribe to uh I don't know if y'all remember the National Geographic's little little books that had the pictures and it told you cool little fun facts about the little the lions and the tigers and the bears and all that stuff. I used to read all that stuff. In fact, that, those are the first books I learned how to read mainly because they had pictures but <laughs> nevertheless i learned how to read those and so um yeah man so growing up as a kid man staying in apartments we really couldn't have dogs um so my first first pet was a turtle yes that's right i know what you're asking troy how'd you go from how'd you go from dogs to turtles well that was all i could have they were small they were quiet <laughs> and they didn't make a lot of mess. So my grandma was like, all right, you want a turtle here? You can go get you a turtle. So anyway, I got me a turtle and uh, his name was Wheezy, by the way. And uh, man, I did everything with that turtle. Did everything, man. I used to I used to put him in the bathtub, let him swim around. Uh, sometimes I let him loose around the house and then like I'd be stressed out trying to find him. Like, dang, where my turtle went? <laughs> but eventually we would find him and he would always be in the same spot. He'd be behind my grandma's pottery plants and stuff. Just, you know, vibing with the plants and stuff. I never understood that. I was like, bro, why are you always hiding behind my grandma's pots of plants and stuff? You know what I'm saying? But anyway, yeah, so that was like my first like introduction to dealing with animals. And uh, like he was very, Wheezy was very respondent to like my moods. Like, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Like, for those who have turtles out there, you know, uh, turtle people, whatever it is, y'all, y'all feel me. Y'all know what I'm saying. But like, I don't know, man. It was just weird, man. Like, he would just like understand, like, you know, when to come out, when to come to me. You know what I'm saying? I guess when my energy was low, I guess. I don't know. When my energy was like not so high. Then he would he could tolerate me. So he would come around. But Man, ever since then, like I just always just been infatuated with the uh, with with animals, man. Just it didn't matter what it is, man. It could be a turtle, it could be a cat, it could be a dog, like it didn't matter what it was. But um my first 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 um introduction with dogs was uh, I was I was staying in this apartment complex and I couldn't have dogs. <laughs> I didn't have a turtle at the time. And um, I used to walk to school. And so when I walked to school, well, I didn't walk to school. I walked to the bus stop and the bus would take us to school. So um, this was in Vallejo. I used to stay in Vallejo. I used to stay in Vallejo. I used to go to Merritt Island. It's not there no more. But anyway, so uh, I would I would take the back alleyway and it was like this like yellow like pit lab. Like it was always there. And so like as I'm walking past the fence, the dog would bark at me like it would bark like aggressively like you know what i'm saying really mad and so one day i just you know i just stood there and i was just staring at it and i just stood there and then eventually the dog stopped barking and then like all of that like all that animosity that woo, 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 like all of that stuff like it turned into like like happy wiggles and like he was like happy to see me, and I was like, "Oh, cool, man!" So I, <laughs> so I went in my backpack, <laughs> and I actually gave the dog like 
you know, my bologna, you know what I'm saying, that I would, you know, well, grandma would make me for my lunch, but, you know, I would give it to the dog. Here, dog, you can have it. And I used to, I used to feed him every day before I went to school, like every day before I hopped on that, that bus. And, you know, I had friends and stuff. They would, uh, you know, they, they would ask me, they'd be like, man, you got any, you know, you got any dogs? You got any, uh, you know, uh, pets? And I'd be like, yeah, I got a dog. <laughs> Lying. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah i got a dog man i got a yellow dog i, I forgot what i named him. i even gave him a name and all type of stuff man so eventually kids wanted to come see the dog they was like man let me let me let me we gonna come see your dog we're gonna play with your dog i was like all right come on so we would come and i would bring them right to the fence <laughs> i'd be like yep look it's my dog and they would always ask me like man why why the dog don't stay with you and i'm like because i stay in an apartment duh <laughs> you know kids we be lying <laughs> so they was like oh that makes sense right and so i gave him a name you know they would come bring him you know treats and stuff and so he was cool like he didn't like he didn't act aggressively towards them like he did with me the first time so like that was hecka cool with me and so like ever since then man i just had more and more trust for animals just growing up you know when i when i got into the dog program in prison that kind of was like my like rendition to like connecting with animals because again mind you like after that like i started getting into the streets heavy like i was like doing all type of crime selling drugs all that stuff and so like i really didn't have time for no animals like i mean i had like you know customers that would have like dogs and stuff like that and i thought like, oh it's cool you got a little dog oh it's cool here you go. That'll be 50 bucks, 100 bucks. <laughs> but like, I wasn't like, I wasn't into like dogs and animals like I am now. And so the dog, the dog training program, like it kind of reconnected me back with animals. And one thing I learned about animals is that animals are super honest, super honest. Like sometimes animals can be more honest than humans sometimes. And the reason why I say that is because dogs going to tell you exactly how they feel. Like if you walk up on a dog and you, hey, how you doing, buddy? And he start growling. Oh, you're not in a good mood. OK, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to do this and do that. You know what I'm saying? Like he's telling you like, no, nah, like it's not a good time. I'm uncomfortable. Like leave me alone. And so, you know, a lot of times with humans, humans, as 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 we try to like go through our day and like, you know, just fake it till we make it we get in this habit of not feeling a certain type of way, but still trying to project that certain type of energy. And a lot of the times dogs, they they sense that off the, off the top. They sense it off the top. Like they know like, you know what I'm saying? Dude, like you're scared. Like I know you're scared. Like just, <laughs> you know, stop telling me to calm down <laughs> and get some confidence about yourself so that I don't have to keep intervening in the stuff. And so like, a lot of my like experiences dealing with dogs and stuff man like it gave me tremendous confidence like it helped me to be the leader for them knowing that you know they're not gonna always make the right decisions a lot of the times and so um i had one dog in the dog program named uh peaches i mean not peaches <laughs> peaches was the one that we always had trouble with <laughs> no nah, I, didn't, I didn't have peaches no nah. Um, I had I had a, a little Chihuahua mixed with like Doberman Pinscher. Her name was Chi Chi, and uh, Chi Chi, uh, she had puppies. She had puppies, and um, unfortunately, they had to remove her from her puppies and find her puppies, you know, home so that they can grow up and be little happy puppies. And then she entered the program. And so when I got the dog, man, I'm going to be honest with y'all. Like, I didn't want her. <laughs> like, I didn't. Like, she for one, she was a small dog. And, like, y'all know, dealing with men, you know, men, we got egos and, you know, all of this stuff. And I don't want no little dog. You know what I'm saying? I want a big dog. You know what I'm saying? But it is, it was what it was. So I ended up getting, you know, Chi Chi. And um, she actually taught me a lot, man. She actually taught me how to rehabilitate a lot of dogs from separation anxiety, which was cool because I've never like dealt with nothing like that before. So like really trying to figure that out was like, it was fun. It was fun in the process. Like 
okay, this is why she's doing that. So I have to figure this out. And so when I got Chi Chi, man, like she would cry like every single night. We put her in the crate. We seen the dog program. We used to have to take the dogs. And when it was time for us to go to lock up, we used to put the dogs in the crates and the crates were in the day room. So literally, like if she was crying and whining, like literally like everyone in the building can hear her. Like even guys that wasn't in the dog program that just so happened to be in the building that we were hosting the dog program in. Like they like they were getting agitated. You know, they were getting mad. They, Man, who dog is that? Man, you better shut that dog up. <laughs> like, like it's like, bro, I can't do nothing. I'm in, I'm in the crate, man. I'm, I'm in the cell. Like, I can't. Like, <laughs> we both locked up. Like, <laughs> what am I supposed to do? And so, um, taking the time and the patience to really like figure out why she was acting like this, and and part of the reason why she was acting like this, or the main reason why, was because again, like I told you guys, she had puppies, and she didn't get that chance to really. Um, nurture and mother those those puppies the way that you know nature intended so um that was a tremendous that was a big traumatic stress on her of thinking that everything that she cares about everything that she gets close to it gets taken away from her and so like just putting myself in her situation and trying to figure out like okay every time she's by herself she feels a certain type of way. So how can I help her not to feel that type of way again? And so what I did was I I put her, I would put her in my room and um, I would put her in the crate and I would, I would, I was lightly close my door. I wouldn't close it all the way if she's by herself, but I would like crack the door and then I would leave and then I would come back in the room but when I came back in the room, I would come in the room as if, you know, I left something. You know what I'm saying? I'd be on my bunk, you know, looking for stuff, and then I would leave. And then I'll come in the room, I leave. I come in the room, I leave. So every time I I did this, I noticed that she would not overreact as much as she did the first time. And so the more and more I kept doing this, eventually I would come in the room and she wouldn't even like she wouldn't even care. And so it dawned on me that, oh, she's doing this because she thinks that she's going to be left by herself and no one's going to come back and get her. So I got to assure her that, yes, I'm going to come back. But just because I come back doesn't mean that I'm going to interact with you. If I come back, I just means that I'm coming back. And so over time, I kept doing this back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until eventually, you know, she was cured. Like I, I was able to put her in the day room, in the crate when it was time to lock up and she wouldn't make a noise. Like she wouldn't make no like, like I remember the first night, like she like didn't make a noise and like she was quiet. Like the next morning, you know, cats was giving me props. They was like, hey, man. You pretty good. <laughs> you, you pretty good, man. That dog, man, she ain't make a noise. Man, how'd you do that, man? And I'm just like, man, I'm just doing my research, man. I'm trying to figure it out. Plus, I ain't, you know, I ain't I ain't want y'all on my helmet every day about this dog crying in the crate. And so um I believe that one of the reasons why um animals are a big importance to me, and I just feel like God created them was to help humans to have more passion with other humans and a lot of times you know and there's a lot of trainers out there that you know they post memes and they say stuff like you know you know you know dogs are better humans are you know bad and you know they're subject to their opinion but again like i feel like a lot of people miss the point and it's like if you can't have compassion for people that these animals are attached to then you really can't help the animal like you really don't care about the animal you see what i'm saying and so this is one of the things that like for me what i do is i take a different approach like i want to like really know like you know like what's going on you know what i'm saying because a lot of you know a lot of trainers like they don't want to take the time to have to see why psychologically or or emotionally like what's going on in your life 
Like, bro, like something's going on because every time you do this, your dog does this, bro. So let's talk about it. Like, what's going on? Well, it's just I had a dog in the past and this happened to the that's in the past, bro. This is a new dog. OK, now you're putting past experiences on a new dog and that's not fair. That's not fair. Look, look at your dog right now, bro. Your dog is stressed out because you're stressed out. See, if I can get you in the same state of happy-go-lucky as your dog, bro, y'all would live a happy, peaceful life. Like, I'm telling you. Like, it's that simple. And, you know, I even have, you know, I even have clients, you know, that hit me up and they tell me, you know, hey, you know, my dog used to do this, but they're not doing this anymore. And I feel a lot more calmer. I feel a lot more like, <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, like, that's what you're supposed to feel like. Like you're never, you're never gonna feel like you're unstable or frantic or none of that stuff and expect your dog to just be okay with that. Like, no, nobody wants to be around that sort of energy. And if they are around that energy, they want to uplift you. You know, that's, that's what, you know, dogs used to do, you know, in the, you know, the pack formation, you know, a lot of people, you know, they don't believe and care in the, in the pack formation, you know, which, you know, is, you know, true, but it, it you do still kind of have to go off of that because that's what animals originated from. Like they originated in a system. Everything is a system. Everything. The school is a school is a system. Business, there's a system uh, in the medical field. It's a everything has a system, bro. So you can't sit there and just say that. Oh no, we don't believe in that because you know. Okay, fair enough. But again, because animals aren't in that pack formation as they once were, that doesn't mean that you still don't have to simulate some type of leadership to make them feel safe. That was the whole thing about dogs being in packs was that they all had each other's back. It's the same thing like gangs. It's the same thing like the military. It's the same thing like the police force. However, however you want to put it, you know, they're all packs. They're packs. They're they're all a group of people within one niche that are working together to get a certain goal, to reach a certain type of accomplishment. And so that that's part of what, you know, dealing with animals like it, it helped me, you know, even in the dog program. Like, I'm not going to sit there and tell you everybody that was in the dog program that we were just buddy, buddy that we, you know, liked. These, like, no, no, we were socially different people, cultural, culturally different people and then racially different people and then everybody had their own outlooks and views i mean you know you you had you had people that were still in the gang life and then you had some people that you know were in you know different you know different gangs and stuff like that so like bro like the dogs actually helped us to be able to work together like i'm i'm keep it real with you like there were people in the dog program that if they weren't in the dog program we wouldn't even talk to each other we wouldn't even come in contact with each other unless you know it was something negative or it was something built around illegal activity you see what i'm saying so like so like dogs just being around the dogs just animals in general bro like they bring people together you know what i'm saying like even people who don't like dogs i'll give a perfect example people that don't like dogs don't like dogs because they're dogs they just don't like dogs because they don't understand them but i guarantee you anytime you bring a dog around somebody who doesn't really like dogs or you know they they're kind of like dogs but they're scared of dogs i guarantee you it changes the whole atmosphere wherever you're at wherever you're at i can tell you bro there were people that haven't been around dogs for nearly two decades and just, you know, giving them the opportunity to like pet your dog, like that was huge shit for them. Like, like some dudes, like no, no exaggeration, like they'd be ready to break out and cry if they wasn't in prison. Like, just because like, like that's what dogs do. Like that's what animals do. Like that's what they're for. You know what I'm saying? It's like I said, like we had people that were socially different. You see what I'm saying? But 
because we are socially different, without these dogs, we wouldn't talk to each other. But now we got something to talk about. It's like, hey, man, that's a nice dog, man. What type of dog is that? Oh, man, it's a shepherd pit. Oh, man, that's cool, man. What's her name? Posa. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. You mind if I... Oh, yeah, it's good. Come on, come on. You know what I'm saying? And, and they they get, now they get to interact with my dog that carries my energy. You see what I'm saying? They're all energy. They're all energy. They're all energy. Some have, you know, really, really strong, you know, strong energy. Some have very, very, you know, sensitive energy. So you have to be aware of where that dog is and how to communicate with that dog. The same thing like people. Same thing like people. You guys, you got people who don't like a lot of excitement, meaning they don't like the loud, spontaneous, you know, hey, how you doing? Hey, hey, come here, give, give, give me a hug like that. Like stuff like that makes them uncomfortable. Not saying that the people who are naturally like that, that's their energy. Not saying that they mean any harm. It's just that's how they are. You see what I'm saying? So a lot of the times, like, animals and dogs like they they're like a mediator you see what i'm saying even if you may be uncomfortable you see what i'm saying your dog can reassure you that no nah, no nah, it's okay it's okay he's just like that he's just excited you see what i'm saying it's like i'll give you a perfect example everybody has that family member or you know that uncle that cousin or whatever the case may be that you know they drink a lot <laughs> or whenever you guys have social gatherings and stuff like that, you know, they get really, really loud. They get really, really excited. So if you don't know them and you aren't around them, you know, constantly, that would scare you. You would be like, man, why is he so? It's like, oh, man, that's that's Uncle Frank, man. He <laughs> he drank he drank a couple Budweiser's, man. He act like that, man. Don't worry about it. Oh, OK, 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 OK. So like you so like for animals, like it's the same thing, man. It's the same thing. Sometimes like you have to reassure an animal that everything is OK. You know, that sometimes the animals have to reassure you that, hey, man, everything is all right, man. I got this under control. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, like animals are what help keep us socially intact and that's you know that's what i feel like a lot of a lot of people they they miss the point they miss the point in that you know what i'm saying people get animals and try to like keep them locked away you know for themselves like no this is this is my dog and like no it's it's the it's the universe's dog it's mother nature's dog <laughs> it's, that's mother nature's animal you see what i'm saying she's just you know generous enough to um, allow you to, um, keep the animal under control, you know, in the environment, but it's never, it's never our animal. Never. It's never our animal. I tell people all the time, like people, you know, they just think that, you know, well, I, I give the dog all these treats and I feed the dog and yeah, but that doesn't, that doesn't insinuate love to them. Like that's not like that. That's humanizing. Like as humans, we think that if we give people all of this, you know, food, we give them all this love and affection and like, like people are supposed to stay, but it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Like a lot, like, like think about it. Like think about the people that you didn't gave stuff to, like not just tangible things, but I mean like just like time and like energy and like real like heart to heart, like, and they still abused it. If that was really if that was really the case and love can, you know, really solidify everything, then there wouldn't be a such thing as a broken heart. People wouldn't get their heart broke. People wouldn't go through experiences in life to where they don't trust. You see what I'm saying? So like that's that's the main thing that for me growing up learning about animals and stuff like that. That's what it's done for me. Like it helped me to have more compassion with people. It helped me to trust and it helped me to, um, it helped me to experience new things. That's the other thing too. Dogs will put you in situations you've never been in before. And sometimes it could be scary, but sometimes it could be like, it could be an exciting thing. You see what I'm saying? So you, you have to, you have to, you have to take both ends of it. You can't just, you know, take one and this thing, you know, 
I don't want that. No, no, no. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> if you have a fully active dog and you yourself aren't a fully active person, then you need to start being very, very active. Because <laughs> if not, you're going to create a very, very nervous, unsure, uh, stressed out dog. And it doesn't, you know, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. And this is one of the things that I see a lot too, that I'm starting to help people and be more creative to try to help people to figure out ways to exercise their dog, even though they aren't, you know, the most active, you know, person out there. You see what I'm saying? There's things that you can do, you know, and again, that's going to be the challenge. That's going to be the challenge. Having animals like it isn't a walk in the park, like, like it's a challenge. It's a, especially with society, especially with our attention span being short, especially with there being so much technology, you know what I'm saying? Like you have to like it's challenging like you have to find ways to be creative to give your dog what your dog needs at the same time as you know still being yourself you have to it's the only way what do you what what are you gonna what are you gonna do like stop your dog from wanting to run around and like do stuff like no your dog wants to do stuff so put time to the side so your dog can come into their natural self and then you guys can go for a walk. Then you guys can go to the dog park. Then you guys can go, you know, mingle and meet new people. That's how it works. Literally, that's how it works. So, um, yeah, like, and the, and the other thing too I learned about dogs is that they just want to coexist. That's it. They want to, they just want to be around us. They want to see how we function and they want to be safe. You know, sometimes as humans, we put too much focus around, you know, the dogs. You see what I'm saying? And a lot of times dogs, they don't want that. Like they don't want to be put on a pedestal. They don't want to be the center of attention. Like they just want to coexist with a confident person that already knows what they want to do. And they just want to be a part of it. That's it. That's it. They don't they don't want to they don't want to control, you know, the show and, you know, dictate what's going to happen because they don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> That's the whole point. They don't know what's going to happen. Like they just know they're just going off of you. You know what I'm saying? If, if, if you're unsure about something, they want to figure out why are you unsure? Let me see what this is. And then, you know, they're going to go from there. But again, like you have to be you. You, you have to be the one that's strong enough, that's confident enough so that they don't have to go out there and get themselves in trouble. Because again, there's a lot of stuff in the world that they don't understand and they're not gonna understand because they're animals. So you have to be the one to teach them. You have to be the one to set the rules and the boundaries for them so that they understand. See, the, 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 thing, the thing about setting boundaries for the animals is is not to be a dictator it's so the animals don't get themselves in trouble and they get hurt because like i said a lot of things that go on in the world a lot of you know these gadgets and stuff they don't know they don't you know they they don't know what this stuff is you know what i'm saying people think it's cute for a dog to chase you know a vacuum it's like no like in his mind like he really thinks like that's that that's like prey like he really thinks like that's something bad so you have to be the one to tell to show him like look look, look, look. i'm gonna turn it on and i'm gonna turn it off see see it's not it's nothing wrong it's nothing wrong with it so yeah so that's that's what i want to talk to you guys about loving animals have more compassion for people man that's that's what it's about you can't just Oh, I just love the animals. I hate the people. No, you can't be, you can't be like that. Cause then that's the energy that you're gonna project on your dog. And then guess what? Now your dog doesn't like people. Or 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 you're a person that don't really like people, but you have a dog that's very outgoing, that's wanna be around people. But every time, you know, your dog gets in that state, you you get mad, you correct them, and like, no, you you can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that. That's not that's not honoring the animal. So just, you know, take the time, reflect on that. You know what I'm saying? This has been Troy. 
Bad Dog Podcast, and I'll see you guys next time. And remember, you're perfect. All of you guys, just like me. See you guys next time. Holla. Thank you.